Hello. Today we're going to demonstrate adjusting the end play on this vertical hollow shaft pump motor. Proper end play adjustment is important to ensure that the lower guide bearing doesn't support the weight of the rotor and that there's adequate room for expansion, thermal expansion, within the motor. On this medium sized motor, the rotor is not too heavy, so it's easy to adjust the end play. On larger frame motors, the weight of the rotor can be difficult to lift. This motor has a thrust bearing in the top and a standard ball bearing in the bottom. That's typical for this type of vertical hollow shaft motor. There are other arrangements with slightly different procedures for setting the end play, but today we're working on this standard motor with the most common procedure for adjusting end play. Technicians usually set the motor up on blocks to make it accessible when adjusting the end play. And as always, follow your company's safety practices and procedures. Wear the proper personal protective equipment. Some tools you'll need, a spanner wrench, a dial indicator, a chain wrench would be helpful, pry bar, soft-faced mallet, some common tools, light machine oil, and some wipes. Before going any further, we'll remove the ratchet assembly, coupling, the splash cover with the ratchet stator. This motor has a lower guide bearing with an inner bearing cap. When we set the end play, we'll start by lifting the rotor so that guide bearing is up against that bearing cap and all end play is removed. The thrust bearing at the top of this motor mounts on a bearing carrier. This assembly will slide onto the shaft after the rest of the motor is assembled. Before going any further, we'll be sure that the threads in the adjusting nut and on the shaft are clean and we'll put a little bit of light oil on them. We'll thread the adjusting nut all the way on. We want to be sure there's nothing to restrict the movement of the adjusting nut so we can tell when the shaft is completely up. Then we'll remove the nut. Now we'll slide the bearing carrier with the top thrust bearing down into place. The bearing carrier is a clearance fit to the shaft and the outer race of the bearing is a clearance fit to the housing. So the assembly should drop easily into place. A couple of taps with a soft face mallet to be sure it's all the way down. Now we'll install the locking washer and the adjusting nut. We'll use a spanner wrench to tighten the adjusting nut and lift the rotor. You can see we're going to need a way to keep the rotor from turning. We'll use some bolts in the hub and in the end bracket. We use a pry bar across the bolts to keep the rotor from turning. We can also use a chain wrench to keep the rotor from turning. I'll well, we use a spanner wrench to adjust the nut. We'll want to monitor how far the shaft comes up with a dial test indicator. Mount the dial indicator and zero the indicator. Use the spanner wrench to tighten the adjusting nut and raise the shaft. On a medium sized motor such as this or a larger motor, it will be easier to use a hydraulic jack to raise the shaft. The rotor is all the way up and the lower guide bearing is up against the inner bearing cap. All of the end play has been removed. Now we'll Bring the adjusting nut down, snug it 
and all of the end play has been removed. The indicator shows that the rotor was lifted over 180 thousandths, or more than four millimeters. Our specification for this motor is eight to 10 thousandths. That's between 0.2 and 0.25 millimeters. So we have more room for axial motion than our specification. That's good. That ensures that the lower guide bearing won't be supporting any of the weight of the rotor, and there's room for thermal expansion. Let's tighten the lock nut to make sure that it's all the way at the top. Then release the hydraulic jack. Now we'll zero the indicator. And we'll loosen the adjusting nut to get our eight to 10 thousandths, 0.2 to 0.25 millimeters of end play. The indicator shows that we've lowered the shaft nine thousandths. The end play is now set correctly. Check to be sure the rotor turns freely. It does, so we'll lock the adjusting nut in place with the locking washer. This video covers the most common method of setting end play on a typical vertical pump motor. There are variations of this process, and some vertical pump motor bearing arrangements require special procedures especially those with springs mounted under a spherical roller thrust bearing. But those are topics for other ESA videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.